Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us today on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon. We've got uh, three interesting and important things to talk about today. One is COVID, of course. Uh, the second is uh, some announcements, recent announcements today about some new uh, uh, events coming to St. Louis. And then the third is talking about what's going to happen this weekend uh, with regard to clean sweep. So kicking this off with the COVID numbers. City of St. Louis had 45 new cases yesterday. We have been averaging now in the last seven days, 40 cases. That's up considerably from where we were just two weeks ago when we were averaging more around 30 cases. So that, you know, we were even down uh, at one point uh, about a month ago where we were averaging in the 27, 28, 29 cases, new cases. Uh, that's your seven day rolling average. So city of St. Louis case count is going up and um, that's concerning. Now, um, looking at folks currently hospitalized, this is in the region, as you know, and this, these numbers are two days old, uh, 298 people were hospitalized two days ago with COVID positive, another um, 76 were suspected, so up at 374 cases. Again, uh, just looking back to 10 days ago, that number was as low as 301, so case counts are, uh, have been going up in the last couple of weeks. Not drastically up, but they are going up. Uh, 73 people COVID positive are in ICU, 42 people COVID positive are on ventilators. So those are the, uh, the COVID numbers for today and you know what we're seeing here is a bit of an upward uh, trend which is concerning to us um, so still most of the people who are positive mm, that was that was a sneeze that I stifled still most of the people um, that are positive are in their 20s and 30s that has not changed. It looks like that's not going to change. Um, but when our numbers are going up, that means, of course, more of them are, are getting COVID, testing positive for COVID. COVID. Um, fortunately, there's a, one spot of good news in that, and that is that uh, COVID deaths have not been going up. Uh, we had one COVID death a couple of days ago, unfortunately. So our total is 201. Um, but as cases go go up, people get sicker later into the into the illness. So we're very hopeful that that's not the case, and and um, so that's one spot of good news on the COVID front. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about what is happening this weekend. It's called Clean Sweep, and you know we've been uh, in. This is a partnership between the Regional Business Council, who really initiated this several years ago and initially it was taking down uh, the worst of the worst in terms of LRA owned vacant buildings because nothing good happens in a vacant building. Um, so it began with that and, and that ran for a few years. It was RBC started it about a number of construction companies were involved they showed up about four or five saturdays uh, a year in the summer spring summer to take down these uh, really bad vacant buildings no roofs no backs buildings that had been sitting vacant and deteriorating for decades in most cases and uh, those construction companies keely fred weber mccarthy alberisi uh, kwame uh, Hemp Hill uh, demolition contractors, Hill, excuse me, Hill demolition contractors. Those companies really were uh, spearheaded this and we are so appreciative of that. Now this has evolved a bit. The Urban League, uh, uh, early on, Better Family Life was very involved with RBC. The Urban League is now involved with RBC and has really helped 
take this to a whole nother level. Along with a woman who works for the city, uh, Laura, I'll leave it at Laura, uh, who organizes all of this, plans all of this, makes sure that all the utilities are cut off, makes sure everybody knows where they need to go. And so this has evolved into uh, what will happen on this Saturday, which is cleaning and clearing of five acres of vacant and overgrown lots with hundreds of volunteers. Uh, usually we have several schools that participate, high schools, colleges that participate. Uh, this Saturday they, we will be uh, demoing, we, when I say we, these contractors will be demoing 14 vacant and abandoned buildings. Uh, and these buildings are very deteriorated and they are uh, on the 4900 block of Aldine this, this week. Most of them are there. We will also, uh, volunteers will be cleaning about a one mile stretch of Martin Luther King Drive from Friendly Temple uh, on, on MLK, basically down to Kings Highway. And uh, so that will be that will be happening. Urban League volunteers will be out there. There will also, though, be health screenings. There will be PPE uh, distribution, blood, pre blood pressure kits. Uh, somebody will be taking some drone photography of this, so we'll have some, some really good um, before and after pics. Uh, if you remember, it was about a month ago, maybe, maybe a little more, that our last clean sweep where the water tower on, on Grand, near Grand and 70, was repainted. And it has become just a beacon. Uh, it's painted white. It, start, it was, hadn't been painted uh, since the 40s, so almost 70 something years. And so that has really, um, it's, it's been a good uplift. So this Saturday is another clean sweep Hundreds of people will be there helping to clean the area. Dozens of companies will be there helping to take down the buildings. And uh, it will make a huge difference uh, in this neighborhood, which is uh, basically at Martin Luther King and King's Highway is, is sort of the nexus of it, and then going west to Friendly Temple. So just a huge thank you to all the companies that are involved, all the construction companies that are involved, to the Regional Business Council, to um, Kathy Osborne, to Mike McMillan, James Clark at the Urban League, uh, and, and so many people who, who participate in this. Many city services as well um, who, who help, help uh, coordinate and implement this as well. So that's, that's good news. Uh, I hope the weather's good on Saturday, and uh, I'll be out there early early in the morning and uh, for, for the better part of Saturday. So, great news. Now, lastly, before I take your questions, of course, um, <clears throat> really big and exciting announcement today from the Enterprise Center. And for those of you who may not have seen it, I think it just went out a couple of hours ago. Uh, the Enterprise Center has uh, been chosen to be the host of the 2025 NCAA Frozen Four. So uh, Frozen Four for College Hockey's National Championship. We have not hosted that here in St. Louis since 2007. So the investment and the partnership that the city and the state have with the Enterprise Center and the improvements that have been made to the Enterprise Center uh, is once again attracting championship events to St. Louis. And this is a lot more, more, uh, more than a, let me start that sentence over again. This is about a lot more than just hockey. This is about tourism. This is about hotel nights. This is about restaurant revenue. This is about um, ho being able to host and to show our city to so many people that will visit. St. Louis for the Frozen Four. Uh, in addition to the Frozen Four, and this I think has been previously announced, but recently, the NCAA men's basketball first and second round uh, tournaments will also be in St. Louis in 2026. So, you know, that seems like uh, a ways away, 2025, 2026, but 
you don't get these big tournaments and these big events at the last minute. You've got to plan for it. So while we're all sort of hunkered down here with COVID, uh, lots of folks have been working to make sure that we have events lined up for when COVID, we, we're on the other side of this um, because we will get to the other side of this. And it's very important that the marketing go on. I know I met yesterday with Kitty Ratcliffe and a number of hotel operators and restaurant operators uh, about the marketing that they're doing for the convention center. So you've got to look forward. We've got to look beyond where we are exactly today. So those are, that's really good news. Enterprise Center hosting the 2025 NCAA Frozen Four. So with that, those are my three topics for today, and I would be happy to take your questions. Couple of questions submitted for today, Mayor. First, are you concerned about the state's dashboard being down yet another day? Should city residents be concerned about the issues they continue to have with their reporting of COVID information? So um, the city, is not dependent on our on getting our information from the state dashboard yes the state dashboard's got to get up and it's got to get fixed but our numbers that i'm giving to you each day we're receiving them directly from those providers so uh our numbers we think have not been affected by the state dashboard and it's pretty good evidence of that is the evidence that our numbers are are going up and so we are and i talked with dr eccles yesterday about this uh we are beginning contract contact tracing on every new case within 24 hours and so um yes the state dashboard should get fixed however city numbers are still good kimberly's question today mayor is you mentioned that cases are up considerably where they over where they were just two weeks ago uh, does the city of st louis expect to implement additional restrictions with the increase in covid numbers Kimberly, not, not at this time, because our numbers are, are bouncing around a bit. But it's certainly something that uh, we are, we look at these numbers every single day. That's why I report to them, to you every, every time I'm on here. And hospitalization numbers are up a little, but not, not too much. It's our new cases that, um, you know, some of them are <clears throat> a few coming from nursing homes again. Uh, and so our, our health department is, is looking at that. We do know that school, St. Louis public schools, which have not had in-classroom learning yet this year, they are on Monday, they are starting pre-K through second grade. And then the following Monday, they're starting third, fourth, fifth, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, something like that. So, you know, we, we think based on the numbers that uh, that that is a good decision, safe for kids to go back to school. But we just have to continue to watch these numbers. What we want to do, um, it, it, and you know, we can't, the data is the data. What we want to do is to be able to lift some restrictions. But at this point in time, right this minute, that's probably a question that somebody has. Um, we're not able to lift the restrictions. Yep, you guessed it. Next question has Next to question. do with bars and restaurants from I Bonnie. Know. We have people submitting questions on both sides. Some folks want the 11 p.m. to stay because we're about to get colder weather and having more people go inside sounds like a bad combo. Other folks say service workers need the employment. So both. Yeah. You know, two things can be true at once. Both of those things are true at once. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that we've been talking about and thinking about is, um, you know, it really has the most to do with mask wearing and social distancing and if we could have high levels of compliance with both of those things our numbers would likely trail down and we would be able to uh, lift some of these restrictions um, we understand that and and that bars restaurants hotels um, you know, we've got to be able to operate, but we've got to, ha uh, to use masks and social distancing. What is or what are some of the most important metrics the city and the health department look at when considering some of these restrictions? Number of new cases, 
number of people in the hospital, and positivity rate. Uh, there are other things that we look at also which are more secondary, uh, which have to do with occupancy in hospitals and that sort of thing. But those three things are the top three things that we look at. How many new cases have we got? How many people are in the hospital? How sick are they, ICU and, and ventilators? Uh, and then what's our positivity rate? Now your positivity rate, ours has been running right around 5%, even a little lower than 5%. We also look at the r naught. That's a complex, more complex um, formula, but uh, meaning how many people get infected off of one positive person. Ours has been running right around one. That's considered to be good, but our cases are going up. So, um, you know, as, as we know, many of these cases now, what we are finding in, in, is that, you know, they're spreading among, among families in small groups even. I, I think that's, that's normal. I mean, many of us are maybe not as careful today uh, or as restrained today as we were a while back, you know, a month ago, two months ago. This does wear on us, but um, we don't want more people to get sick either. So those, that's what we look at. Mary's question, Mayor, has to do with stagehands and union workers, places that like the Stiefel and Fox Theater, mm -hmm. who want to get back to work. What is the city's position on when large venues uh, can begin to have a higher occupancy? So Mary, we want, we want your folks to go back to work also. The question is, uh, how do they go back to work? How do, how do we have a convention, for example? And I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I met with Kitty Radcliffe yesterday, some hotel owners, um, also uh, a union representative who may, may be uh, your representative. Uh, everybody wants to get back. We've got to figure out how to, how to get back safely. And you know, how do you have uh, thousands of people in one place safely. It's one thing to be seated apart. You can accomplish that. But how do you, you know, how about when everybody gets up at intermission? What happens then? How about when everyone's coming in and leaving? So all of those things are, are things that large venues are, you know, they're trying to plan for this too because they, they really want to have big events, but they really want to be safe. I mean, again, two things can be true at the same time. So. Uh, and we have a follow-up question about unemployment and COVID. Could you speak to what the city is doing to help people? This is from a Mary, maybe the same Mary, but what the city is doing to help folks who have been unemployed because of COVID since the spring. So we're doing a number of things, Mary. <clears throat> One, and I've talked about this uh, several times, we have rental and mortgage assistance monies available for people who have been unemployed or their hours have been cut as a result of COVID. So you can get up to three months of rental or mortgage assistance through that. You apply online, go on the city's website, you can apply. Um, uh, one of our partners, our not-for-profit partners are processing those applications. We have, um, I don't have the numbers right here, but I, so I'm going to go from memory. About a thousand, am I right? You, on? Units? Uh-huh. 600 or so okay a million dollars out uh we have paid the rent on 600 unit rent or mortgage on 600 units we have many more in the pipeline um who we're trying to you know get the information from the tenant get the information from the landlord when someone qualifies for that the check goes directly to the landlord so that the landlord gets their rent. You know, landlords are hurting too, and, and I know sometimes there's not a lot of sympathy for landlords, but you gotta think they've got mortgages too. They've got utilities to pay, water bills to pay, and that sort of thing. So this has a real um, trickle effect to other, to other folks. So rental and mortgage assistance, uh, $3 million we've funded in utility assistance. I think we've, spent close to half of that at this point in time helping people keep their electric on um it's been electric so far you know the winter will be gas um so those are those are the major major uh things uh flu season mayor mm -hmm. uh, you talked about schools uh reopening a little bit in person 
what is being done to prevent what's being called a twindemic COVID mm -hmm. and the flu? We're very worried about a twindemic. And um, so as you've probably seen, and you can see it on our, on our website, uh, there are many places where you can get a free flu shot. Some of them are our federally qualified health centers, Walgreens, lots of places. So please get your flu shot. One of the things that we're concerned about is a lot of people got their flu shot at the office because some, you know, a, a, someone would come to the office and everybody just kind of line up and you'd all get your flu shot. I got my flu shot a few weeks ago, one of our events that we, that was at uh, Page and Union, we gave uh, flu shots through, um, was on a parking lot. Uh, so you got to get your flu shot. The symptoms, as I understand it, for the flu and for COVID, some of them look pretty similar. And so um, you want to get your flu shot so that you really decrease the likelihood that you'll get the flu. And that you'll get, you know, when you get down, then you're going to be more susceptible to other things as well. So maybe that's kind of an old word, but that, that's a word that my mother used to use, you know, don't get down, meaning don't get sick. So, couple of other topics that were submitted today: voting uh, about our offsite polling places at mm -hmm. the library. Mm -hmm. Do you have to live in the the precinct or wherever the, your mm -hmm. library is, or can you vote at any of those libraries? Uh, you got to live in the city of St. Louis, so you got to be a city of St. Louis registered voter. And if you are, you can vote at any of those five places. So, just to remind you, it's downtown here at 13th and Olive, or excuse me, 12th and Olive, 300 North Tucker. So downtown here, downtown at the Central Library, the big main library, uh, and if you haven't been there yet, that'd be a, a good little field trip for you, it's beautiful. Uh, at the Julia Davis Library on, uh, I'll give you the address there, I think I remember that by now. Uh, 4415 Natural Bridge, um, Schlafly Library, which is at Lindell and Euclid, and Booter Library, which is 4401 Hampton. Um, so five places that you can vote remotely. All the, lo all the library locations is electronic voting. I've seen, you know, some folks post, it took them just a few minutes. This is the third day for it. Um, so far, we've had how many people have voted at the libraries this week? Uh, between the libraries and downtown, it's about 750. So about 750 people. But it's only been Monday and Tuesday. We don't have the numbers yet for today uh, for those for the library locations. And then, of course, downtown has been open. The downtown election board has been open for a couple of weeks. But um, more and more people are. Uh, there's been about a little over 10,000 people in the city of St. Louis who have already voted. Some voted remotely, some voted with mail-in or, or mail-in absentee. So about 10, a little over 10,000 people, and this was a day or two uh, old. Uh, a couple of folks submitted questions about the census mayor, which is ending mm. tomorrow. What has the city done to help um, under or difficult to count communities and populations, and how concerned are you about a sooner than expected deadline? You know, I'm actually, I'm very concerned about it because the information on the census has just kept changing. I mean, first it's this day, then it's this day, then they were going to leave it a different, so then yesterday the Supreme Court made a, um, a, a ruling that the census would end at 5 o'clock tomorrow, the 15th uh, at 5 o'clock. The city of St. Louis has uh, only 54% of folks have self-responded. Now, more, more people than that have been counted because we've had our people out. Charles Bryson has led that effort for us. Um, and we've had lots of people out, lots of not-for-profits helping us. The census workers have been out, although they pulled out about 10 days ago, I guess, nine or 10 days ago. Another sort of, you know, unexpected situation here. So really, at this time, you've only got about 24 hours to get your census information in. You can go online and do it. Um, very important uh, to the federal funding that your city gets 
for the next 10 years. So please do that. Got a question about Prop 1 on the ballot this uh, November, Mayor, and what it would mean for jobs in the city and what jobs the city is currently hiring for. Okay. So Prop 1 is um, a question that says, can the city hire an employee from, say, St. Louis County? Someone who lives in St. Louis County, can they work for the city? Can they be a policeman? We're always hiring there. Can they be a fireman? We're hiring. We need trash truck drivers. We need tow truck drivers. We need tree trimmers. Uh, we have some IT positions open. Um, if you go online to the city's website, personnel department, you'll see all the open. We have about 900 open positions. Now, some, on some positions, we have a hiring freeze on because we are going to be short in this year, this fiscal year, so from July 1 till next June 30th, we're predicting to be almost $70 million down in our revenue. So we are being very careful about every nickel that we spend, about every supply that we buy. Oh, do we actually have to have it today? Can it wait? Uh, but there are some positions which we absolutely have to hire for, and we are still hiring for those positions. So go online, fill out the application, um, every position in the city pays $15 an hour or more, of course. Full-time positions all have insurance, health insurance, life insurance, benefits, access to um, a deferred retirement savings plan. Um, so go on and apply. It's 2.30, Mary. That's it for today. It's already over. It's 2.30. Uh, thank you all for being on with us today. Uh, really appreciate the chance to talk to you and uh, mostly appreciate the chance to answer your questions. So thanks for being with us today and uh, we'll be back and see you shortly. Thanks.